White House in a moment and more on the breaking news that the president has invited both Senators McCain and Obama to a congressional group meeting tomorrow at the White House, to which we're now advised Senator Obama has just agreed. More details on that from the White House lawn in a moment. First, these last 10 days may be noted as the time Senator McCain stopped running against Senator Obama and started running instead against freedom of the press and the First Amendment and maybe reality. The New York Times revealed today that McCain's campaign manager did not stop receiving payments of 15000 a month from the failed mortgage giant Freddie Mac years ago, as McCain had claimed, but only last month. The campaign responded with the wrath of a thwarted child. In our fourth story on the countdown, cries of media bias amid evidence of a link between Rick Davis and a lobbying effort. Senator McCain, in an interview with our colleague CNBC's John Harwood, all but defied reporters to investigate that relationship. My campaign manager has stopped that, has had nothing to do with it since, and I'll be glad to have his record examined uh, by anybody who wants to look at it. That was on Sunday. On Monday, the New York Times looked at it, reported that from 2000 until the end of 2005, Rick Davis received nearly $2 million for heading up an advocacy coalition to lobby on behalf of Fannie and Freddie. The McCain response to that, calling the newspaper 150% in the tank for Senator Obama. Today, the New York Times reported that the payments to Davis's firm continued until last month, that even though Davis himself was on leave from that company, he still held an equity stake in it, and it still bears his name. In response, the McCain camp grew more petulant still. This report from the New York Times must be evaluated in the context of its intent and purpose. It is a partisan attack falsely labeled as objective news, and its most serious allegations are based entirely on the claims of anonymous sources, a familiar yet regretful tactic for the paper. Uh, six anonymous sources, including one Republican. Meanwhile, Mr. Davis fell off the radar today, quietly canceling a reporter's luncheon sponsored by the Christian Science Monitor. The aforementioned John Harwood is CNBC's chief Washington correspondent, also a political reporter with the New York Times, and he joins us live from the North Lawn at the White House. John, good evening. Hey, Keith. I'll ask you about uh, uh, the president and the two senators and this meeting tomorrow in a moment, but first about what we heard uh, from the campaign and the Times report and McCain today. Is there another interpretation of this yeah. other than that Senator McCain looked you right in the eye and did not tell you the truth about Rick Davis's ties to these failed mortgage yeah. giants? I do think there is, uh, Keith. The question is, what did uh, Rick Davis tell John McCain? Mm. Some within the McCain campaign are wondering about that. You know, did uh, uh, was there uh, something unclear in their communication about this before John McCain went out and said that to me, or or was it something else? That's really the uh, relevant question. Freddie Mac's interest in Rick Davis was described by one of its former officials very simply as access to Senator McCain. Is that a is that a definition of influence peddling, or does it need to be lowered? No, I think that's exactly what it is. When people hire uh, operatives who are close to particular politicians, one of the reasons they do that is that they can talk to them. And uh, uh, access, influence, whatever you want to call it, that's, there's a whole lot of that going on in Washington, and, uh, and this would seem to fall into that pattern. The breaking news that we keep mentioning, this invitation from President Bush uh, to Senator McCain, to Senator Obama for a meeting with congressional leaders tomorrow at the White House, which Obama has accepted and which uh, Democrats have pointed out, uh, it seems to be odd that the president only called for this meeting after Senator McCain had called for the uh, suspension of his own campaign and the postponement of the debate, that it seems awfully like the president is trying to backstop uh, McCain and and gain credit for himself and the senator in in the resolution of this. Does, is the resolution uh, of this problem still as imminent as it seemed today? And is there in fact a, a bandwagon effect going on here? I do think so, Keith. Uh, and you know, uh, Barney Frank earlier this evening was saying we're getting closer. In fact, he was saying we don't really need John McCain and Barack Obama to come back and get involved in this. But uh, be that as it may, people who are looking for a solution to this crisis that's clogged up the credit markets have a lot to be happy about tonight, which is a, there now seems to be a bit of a competition going on between the two leading presidential candidates to, uh, to push this thing forward. Uh, and I think the odds are that in the next 24, 48 hours, we're going to have the outlines of a deal. And I suspect, Keith, that'll happen in time for that debate to go forward on Friday night. John McCain's aides are saying he may not show up in Mississippi. I'd be surprised if that happens because the debate commission says it's going forward and Barack Obama's going to show up. Yeah, I, the only other option perhaps is Senators Obama and Biden to debate each other. I doubt we're going to see that. Nice. I, the, the attacks on the media, I can't let this go without, without addressing this with you because you've now fallen in here to this great maw that the rest of us have already been in. It's NBC, it's MSNBC, it's CNBC, it's the New York Times, it's Newsweek. At what point does this 
this, and we know it, it's intended to resonate with the base, but at what point does it stop resonating with the base as much as it sounds like paranoia to everybody who is not the base? Well, first of all, I'm the one starting to get paranoid because I work for both the New York yes, Times you're and you're a doofer right there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, look, uh, I think this is part strategy and part frustration on the McCain campaign. They know that things have not been going well for them in the last week. This economic crisis is helping Barack Obama a lot. And so you see John McCain searching out for different tactics. The uh, suspension of his campaign today can be seen in that uh, light. So I think, uh, you know, Steve Schmidt and the rest of the campaign, they're very trying very hard to win this thing. They know it's a pretty tough road to hoe for them. And uh, uh, I think the rest of the country is going to sort of process it in that light. John Harwood of the New York Times and CNBC. Fortunately, he doesn't do any work for Newsweek. Uh, <laughs> many thanks, John. You bet.